In our gospel today, Jesus sends his disciples out two by two, telling them to take nothing for the journey except a staff. In other words, boys, we're going basic economy with no carry-on luggage. It's already the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I'm Father Alan, and sipping on the Sabbath begins right now. With this podcast, Sipping on the Sabbath, I always try to present the scripture readings that we will hear proclaimed at Mass on the upcoming Sunday in a unique, a new, humorous, insightful, practical, passionate, orderly, understandable, relatable way because the scriptures that we have for Mass every Sunday are really tailored to give us that insight, that spiritual food, that encouragement, and also the challenge that we need to continue to grow in the spiritual life. And so I'm very happy that you are here with me today, journeying along every Sunday to say, Lord, what is the particular word that you have for me today? Give me ears to hear it and the grace I need to carry it out. It's the time of year when many of us are traveling for a vacation and we've all seen and we will see again that guy. You know that guy? That guy, especially if we're traveling on an airplane, that guy, I just call him overhead bin guy. Overhead bin guy. You know the guy, he brings on board all of his carry-on luggage and he tries <laughs> He tries to stuff this suitcase up into the overhead bin and we're left wondering, or I'll speak for myself, I'm just left wondering, buddy, what are you doing? How do you possibly think that that is going to fit into that overhead bin or fit under the seat in front of you? And to be honest with you, I find myself taking this guy's inventory <laughs> like I'm guilty of uh, doing that. How many of us could be labeled overhead bin guy or, or overhead bin girl for that matter? And Jesus in the gospel today, he is calling the 12, beginning to send them out two by two. This is Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, we're looking at, and here it's verse 7 and 8. Take nothing, he says, for the journey except a staff. How would we do with this? What do we pack when we plan to go on a trip, whether it's for business, study, or for leisure? How much stuff do we need to bring with us? Would we be labeled overhead bin guy, <laughs> overhead bin guy taking so much stuff with us. I know someone who has traveled to far distant various places all over the world and always brings just a small backpack that fits under the seat in front of her. She's been doing this for years. Now I'm not there yet. God, help me to grow in my trust that you will provide. Lord, help me to grow in deeper attachment from the material things of the world. But are we that guy? Are we that guy taking up precious real estate in the overhead bin space on an airplane? Do I get anxious? when I'm standing in line to get to my seat, thinking, oh my goodness, I hope there's some space in the overhead bin for my stuff. And so I want to offer a new take, this new, unique, hopefully insightful, even humorous way of looking at this particular gospel passage, because Jesus is sending us out Remember, Scripture is not just about that which happened, it's about that which is still happening. And so Jesus is sending us out two by two. And the question to launch this reflection here today is, 
Am I carrying any unnecessary emotional and or spiritual baggage trying to stuff my suitcase in the overhead bin my overhead bin guy in the spiritual life the gospel that we have we're continuing to look at mark's gospel now we're into chapter six it's a call a challenge an invitation to travel lightly basic economy with no carry-on luggage that means i need to decide i'm going to leave certain things behind i don't need to take these things and it also challenges us to grow in our trust that god indeed will provide with what i need not always what i want but what i need so that i can participate in the mission that he has for me cooperating and working with another or others plural both of which amos the prophet who we have in our first reading today and the 12 who are mentioned in today's gospel they did this they responded to the lord's invitation for their life traveling basic economy with no carry-on luggage unfortunately the audiences that they spoke to were not willing to do likewise so let's take a deep dive into this let's look at amos and then the 12 and finally ourselves so first we have the prophet amos who is referred to as the shepherd prophet Amos chapter 7 verse 15 has the Lord giving Amos his mission, his commission, go, the Lord says, prophesy to my people Israel. That is what Amos heard the Lord say to him. And so he responded to that invitation, that call, that commission, and he is sent. We don't know this for sure, but presumably he also went basic economy with no carry-on luggage to preach to a people who had turned away from the Lord. Israel under King Jeroboam had grown, yes, militarily and economically strong, but they were spiritually bankrupt, rotting from the inside out. And Amos is rejected. Amaziah says to Amos, this is Amos chapter 7, verse 12, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. In other words, get out of here. We don't want to hear what you have to say. Don't you be coming in here calling us to convert, calling us to change. Enough of this call to repentance. We don't want to hear that. Get lost. Go away. The people of Israel, they had. They had a lot of carry-on baggage, carry-on luggage. They were overhead bin guy, overhead bin girl, overhead bin people, <laughs> try to bring all this stuff along with them. They were unwilling to part from that which is or was not of the Lord. And they feared, because they relied too much on the human strength, that they couldn't live without it. God was calling them to repentance, calling them to freedom and unfortunately they missed out they missed out on the time of invitation they were not willing to surrender not willing to cooperate not willing to say lord i'm going to do we're going to do what you're calling us to do which is to convert to change to turn around and come back to you and experience your mercy and your freedom and new life that is found in you and not in my stuff. Can we identify with this in our own life today? And then there is the 12. Jesus first called them, then he formed them, and now in the gospel account we have here today, he sends them out two by two. Mark 6 verse 7. And that's the process of formation 
that the Lord worked in their life and works in our life. Jesus calls us, Jesus forms us, and then Jesus sends us out two by two. And we want to be attentive to the cooperator, and I'll speak more about this in a moment, but the cooperator or cooperators that the Lord is sending us or sending us to so that we can work together. Who went with whom when Jesus paired them off two by two? We're not too sure, but it certainly was a time in their life, as it can be a time in our life, of adjustment and letting go. They're told to bring only a staff. Biblically, the staff represented authority and reliance on God. And Mark tells us in the Gospel that the Lord says to them, I'm giving you authority over the unclean spirits. This is Mark chapter 6, verse 7. So that staff represents the authority that Jesus had given to them. And this mandate to take nothing, this is Mark chapter 6, verse 8, challenged their, and it challenges our, reliance upon earthly material things. Jesus also said that they were not to put on two tunics. Mark chapter 6, verse 9. What's up with that? Why not have a second tunic? Well, a tunic is a garment that is worn next to the skin. It's what the soldiers cast lots for at the crucifixion. John chapter 19, verse 24. And a second tunic would be worn for warmth. And the disciples are told that they were to sleep in houses. Mark 6, verse 10. Wherever you enter a house. Which implies, again, I'm going to look after you. People will come into your life. You'll meet people on the path, on the journey. And maybe some of us have gone on walking pilgrimages here in Canada or perhaps over in Europe. And we can testify to how individuals came into our life. That we had the humility to ask for help. And people were more than willing in their generosity to help us. So the disciples are given this mandate to go out two by two. Bring only a staff. Don't bring two tunics. Wear sandals. But you know what? I'm going to provide for you. Don't be overhead bin guy. <laughs> taking on too much stuff, hauling this stuff around, and I'll get to a specific application of this call in just a minute. But first, more coffee. The twelve, they are sent out, and they are to proclaim, this is Mark chapter 6, verse 12, that all should repent. Now, that was not an easy mission, it's certainly not an easy mission today. And so the Lord forewarns them, Mark chapter 6, verse 11, if any place will not welcome you. Okay, so the implication here being, okay, boys, yeah, we're going basic economy, no carry-on luggage, but it's not going to be easy. People are going to reject what you have to say. But carry on, trust in me. Amos and the Twelve experienced rejection. And when they experienced rejection, and when we experience rejection for the faith, for proclaiming the name of Jesus, for witnessing to testifying, to wanting to evangelize, to proclaim how having Jesus as our friend changes everything in our life, when we do all that, we can be assured that we will experience rejection. But it's in those times that we're offered an opportunity to practice, practice trust in the Lord, his providence and his guidance. And to find not our trust in things of the world, but again, in the Lord. I desire to cooperate with the Lord. Hardship will come my 
way. But in those moments, I remember, no, my confidence is not in the stuff that I'm carrying along with me. It's not the stuff that I'm starting to stuff up into the overhead bin. I'm not called to be overhead bin guy, <laughs> overhead bin girl. Instead, I'm called to be a disciple of the Lord who has formed me and sends me out and will indeed provide all that I need. We are called in our life to be part of people's lives, real lives, real lives of real people desiring to have a real encounter with the real person who is Jesus. And as a priest, I am blessed to be invited into people's lives at happy times and at sad times and every time in between. And thankfully, I don't have to do this by myself. I have my brother companions of the cross whom I can rely upon and they know they can rely upon me because we are cooperators together in the mission. We're not called to be soloists. St. John of the Cross said that a coal that burns alone soon goes out. St. Augustine said that when we go before the Lord, we appear at the pearly gates, and the Lord is going to ask, where are your brothers? Where are your sisters? Where are the people you worked with? Where are the people you helped by cooperating with me in the mission I entrusted you with to help bring them to eternal life as well, by the grace of God. Two witnesses are more credible than one, Deuteronomy 19, verse 15. And since Jesus is indeed calling us to a specific task, a specific mission, he has a particular work that he is inviting us to cooperate with him in doing and with others, do I believe? Do I believe that he will give me, give us, the grace to accomplish that? Who were the twelve? Simple, uneducated fishermen, with the exception of Judas, who was not a fisherman. Who is Amos? By his own admission, he said, this is Amos chapter 7, verse 14, I am a herdsman, a dresser of sycamore trees. But yet they were called. So let none of us think, well, you know, who am I? What can I really do? God couldn't possibly work through me. Yes, he can. He can work through each of us. And together we can do, cooperating with his grace, trusting in his providence, seeking his guidance, seeking his direction, we can do amazing things for him. Where is the Lord? Where is the Lord calling us out together? This is Mark chapter 6, verse 7. Where will we journey this week? Taking nothing except a staff. Mark 6, verse 8. Our faith is not to remain within the four walls of our parish church or our homes among like like-minded people whose company we enjoy, what will we take along with us as we go out two by two? What is Jesus asking us to leave behind? How is the Lord Jesus asking us to trust in him this week? We may see focus on, worry about what we lack, but God instead sees the gifts that he has entrusted to us and he's happy that we are desiring to cooperate with him and cooperate with each other. We're not to be carrying around extra stuff. We're not to be overhead bin guy. We're called, yes, instead to carry each other. What am I carrying? What am I carrying? Is it anger? Is it fear? Jealousy? Envy? Suspicion? Pride? Greed? Lust? 
unforgiveness? What about rejection? None of these things fit under the seat in front of us. In basic economy, there are no overhead bins. And why would I want to pay an extra fee to check this stuff in? So let us pray. I invite you to place your hand on your heart. We first of all invoke you, Holy Spirit, come fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have called us, that you form us, and that you send us out. Help us, Lord Jesus, help us to let go of whatever we're carrying around, anger, fear, jealousy, suspicion, pride, greed, lust, rejection. Let's take a moment to call to mind, whatever, what else am I carrying in my life? What is the Lord asking me to let go of? How is the Lord inviting me to cooperate with him? So we ask you, Jesus, to help us. Help us to trust in you. And send each of us, Lord, a cooperator. Someone with whom we can work to advance your kingdom. Continue, Lord, to show us the way. Where would you have us go this week, Jesus? We ask you, Lord, for your power to do your will, because we have no power. We pray, Lord, that we would have the willingness to let go, to trust, to respond, to say yes to you today, Jesus. Mother Mary, Saint Joseph, our own patron saints, guardian angels of God, please pray for us. Amen. Well, there you go, my dear friends. God bless you there. Thanks for journeying along with me. In the meantime, remember that when we are powerless, that is when we are strong and victory is indeed gained through surrender. Stay caffeinated and may Almighty God bless you now, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God love you.